All right, welcome to the Blender Q&A. We have our wonderful panelists here. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. Brad? Hi, I'm Brad Clark. I run Rigging Dojo and cause trouble all over the place for, for good trouble. And uh, that's it for me for now. <laughs> um, I'm uh, Christian Molman. Uh, I'm a freelance animator, and I also make my own indie games. Hi, I'm Marion Fischer from Germany, right now working for Independent Arts and doing a lot of great stuff beside that. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, so you guys are all here because you did pre-recorded talks for Blender. Excellent. Uh, so my first question is, what drew all of you to Blender and what other 3D programs have you used? Uh, can we go the other order? So Marion, okay. Kitchen, Brad. Yeah. <laughs> so um, at university, I started learning everything with 3ds Max. And at work, uh, we also always, almost always use 3ds Max in the tiny bit sometimes Maya. It seems in Germany, 3ds Max is the thing for, for a lot of um, games studios, at least at that time. And then I um, switched to my new employee, employee, the independent arts, and we were working on a thing and an animation. And, and I, I had seen that Blender was coming out with a new layout that was like two years ago. It looked really pretty good and I had already looked a bit into it and worked on it on the side. And that day I worked with 3ds Max and it crashed 19 <laughs> times the day. 19 that's, times. That seems and very I, obvious for <laughs> 3ds Max. I can relate uh, to that. Yeah, yeah. And it was like... Can we try something what? different? <laughs> 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 I was so angry. I was like, this can't be. It was just something so easy that it should not have crashed. And I was like, okay, what about Blender? Hi, hi, are you my new friend? Oh, yes, you are. And so um, from that on, I, we still sometimes have to export, import in other programs. But on my side stuff, what I'm doing beside work, I only work with Blender now. And um, for most animations, we also work on Blender. That's wow. what got me into it. That's awesome that you were able to to <laughs> make them change that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How about you, Christian? Um, so I sort of started getting interested in in Blender when I saw the um, uh, Open Movie uh, Project Gooseberry um, film project. Right. Because yeah. um, it seemed really, really interesting the way they were kind of basically open sourcing a whole movie, and it was actually like a, a crowdfunding project at the at the time. Um, and the, the film didn't actually end up, uh, like the feature film didn't end up going anywhere for them. But, um, at that point I started sort of following it and, uh, um, like I, I saw all the stuff they were doing, all, like all the features they were, uh, they were adding and it, it just seemed really interesting at the time I was mostly using like, uh, Maya and 3ds Max, depending on, depending on the job. Um, but, um, like the the features they they were adding were really interesting, but at the same time at the at the time I think this was around like version two point five still. Um, the interface was still kind of an acquired taste. Um, so, <laughs> That's like, a very I, nice I, way of putting that. <laughs> yeah, so so I bounced off it a couple of times basically, um, but around uh, version two point seven sort of it started getting a little more user friendly, um, and then I started like really trying it out and. Um, you know, using it for some some personal projects and like uh, some some freelance work, um, and then and then with um, two point eight, basically they just completely redid the whole interface, and it became really much more of a um, a user friendly thing to to work with. Um, so at this point, I'm pretty pretty much using it for uh, all my personal projects and and like some uh, freelance stuff, but. Um, um, yeah, and beyond that, I also still use like other programs depending on um, on the job. But, um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Awesome. Um, Go ahead, Brad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, well, so you know, I I was uh, volunteering at my my son's uh, and daughter's school, and they were doing a, a after school club, and I knew of Blender for a while, but they were they were needing help with like three D printing and and we were we were playing with stop motion 3D printing, so I I was like loading up Blender and just kind of messing with it a little bit, and then, you know, 2.8 was really when I wanted to look at it again because um, I've been a you know Autodesk 
slash alias user for a long time and you know across power animator softmage xsi maya you know motion builder max and then um you know just having all that that knowledge in my head when i went to look at blender i was like uh, okay well <laughs> this is not really you know i i, I don't you know, there, there's no reason for me to, to look at Blender at the moment. And then Grease Pencil stuff started coming out, and I was really excited about that because I was teaching an animation club after school for kids, and uh, we were using different stuff. And my son wanted to do an animated short film. So we, we started playing with Blender and Grease Pencil, and I had to learn it just faster than he was needing to ask me a question. <laughs> and he, was like, he was like 10, you know, 10 or 11. And, uh, and then... I got him up to speed on grease pencil and then I left him alone for a weekend and he did like a two minute animated short with animals running and fire. Like he just, just spent the weekend animating and did all this work in it. And I was like, how did, how did you, I don't know how you got all that done, but you know, he was dragging stuff in from the internet and dropping, you know, images into rotoscope and like, it was just really seamless. And he, that was on a beta. And I was like, I'm going to play in blender just for grease pencil. And that's all I was looking for it. And then, I started to explore the nonlinear tools and just playing around with some of the other stuff and realizing that there was like no information available. And that's that, that started where I ended up now, which is yeah. <laughs> telling people uh, how to getting, now use Blender. <laughs> getting more, more job offers and work because of that than Maya or motion builder at the moment. So that's amazing. I don't know. It's yeah. uh, it's good. It's amazing. So, um, kind of jumping off of that, uh, you you use Grease Pencil, and Marion, you've used Grease Pencil a lot too because you're a two D animator. So, what makes Grease Pencil in Blender so different from any other program that has like these two D elements? Can you explain that to someone who's never used Blender before? Hi, Marion. <laughs> <laughs> so many stuff. That's that's a, it's a broad question. I mean, mm -hmm. actually, my talk was about right, more yeah. or less about that. Um, just kind of Especially a summary would be great. <laughs> that you can actually draw nicely in a 3D program. Mm -hmm. like that no other 3D program offers that you can really draw nicely in it. There might be some weird add-ons or something, maybe, I don't know. But you, no other program allows you to draw in it. And um, that was really cool. And then that you don't have to switch to another program to get any 2D stuff in. Right, and then that I can. So I'm actually not a 2D animator. I'm actually a 3D animator at work. I'm mm -hmm. doing 3D animation, and then all the rigging tools that I knew from Blender, all the bones that we use as 3D animators, I can just use on my on my 2D character and not have to draw all the single frames. <laughs> that is the cool thing in that. Yeah, uh, that's that's making ink so different. But if you want to draw every single frame, you can still do that. So there's a lot of freedom and a lot of possibility to mix all these techniques. And um, yeah, the overall, it's very fascinating topic. Fascinating topic. Topic. Awesome. I'd I'd say to me, just just the thing that makes Grease Pencil stand out. What made me interested at all was seeing that like you can take the procedural stuff like modifiers or or lighting or or think about like a multiplane camera, and and actually just have all the physical 3D transformations of your drawings and then still go in and, and draw something that looks like a drawing and then sculpt it and and modify it as if it was a mesh. So yeah. you get like this this drawing sensibility and then all of the 3D things that you want to apply to it are there mm -hmm. without having to like export out an image sequence and then load it into your 3D software and then composite it and, and keep messing with it. It's all just one seamless environment. Awesome. Yeah, you you can also use it as like a um, like a blocking kind of tool as well. Like yeah. you can do like a whole line test basically inside your scene, even like displace it through you know three D space, and then and then you can basically pose your whole character under the drawing essentially, yeah. which oh. is pretty yeah. handy. And swap out the transforms. You can animate the object and then just drop in your three D, you know, yeah. model. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's super cool. Okay, so then that might answer this next question, <laughs> but maybe okay. not. Uh, what's one feature that's in Blender that you wish you could bring to any other 3D program? And we'll start with Christian this time. Hmm. Well, definitely Grease Pencil would be pretty cool. Um, <laughs> but since we kind of covered that, um, 
uh, one thing that's really nice is that um, the way uh, the way rigging and, and stuff works is um, really uh, non-destructive and, and flexible. So like um, I was working on this uh, rig for like a panther character. And at one point, I realized I kind of made the, the front paws too too long. Like they were sort of like like the whole digit degrade thing. I was kind of getting that wrong, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And so I was like, OK, I need to fix the model. Um, but I've already rigged and animated the whole thing. Like I did a walk cycle and, and stuff. Um, so, so I basically just went back into the model, just adjusted it, and then um, went back into rigging mode in pose mode. And then it was pretty much fine. Like I had to tweak a little bit of the weight painting. And I, I think I had to like reapply some shape keys or something, like the blend shapes, basically. Um, but it still pretty much worked. Um, and also, there's this one uh, add-on that you should know about that's um, uh, really handy that uh, um, that really helps with this as well. Uh, Mesh data transfer, I think it was called. Um, that basically, like on top of the flexibility that's already there, which is pretty good, like it almost doesn't ever break. Um, like if you really, really mess with your model and like add a bunch of geometry or whatever. Um, you can still basically keep the same rig and the same uh, weight painting information if you use this add-on by just saying, like, sort of copy the the painting, the weight painting information from like either the UV information or just from the, like the general shape of it, and it's it's just it's it's like magic. It's super handy. You can you can just pretty much keep going and like go back and forth. It's um, it's, it's really great. It's as if the transfer attributes tool in Maya worked like Gator and Softmush XSI. <laughs> I enjoyed I enjoyed that reference. <laughs> Softmush XSI was my first I, program I I've, ever, really, I've ever I've ever learned. Cute. That might date me, but yeah. <laughs> uh, what about what about you, Brad? Was, or did that answer your question? <laughs> I think the biggest part of Blender that like I would like to see, and I was actually just missing it yesterday, was um, the the animation curve modifiers, like having, you know, Max has this concept a little bit, but it's so granular. You have to apply it at each channel. Um, we we did a, you can do it at a clip level, right? So I can I can basically motion design a a a stack of modifier curves that create an an effect at the the global animation level, and then. Um, animate all of that without having to go in and touch any of the animation curves. So, you know, just just having more procedural animation filtering tools available that Blender has out of the box um, in other software would be great. What about you, Marianne? The stability what <laughs> brought me to Blender. I mean yeah, yeah. Me Mary's just gonna throw uh, shade at 3ds Max the entire time, which I'm okay with because I've also worked in 3ds Max. I, I still, I still like it. Like, like it's, it's, it's a younger brother that's a bit crazy. Mm. You know, you still love them. <laughs> um, but, um, but what I also like is um, the avail availability of tutorials. Mm. When mm -hmm. I um, worked in 3ds Max back then, when I started in the industry and searched for rigging tools, tutorials, there were none. There, there was nothing in the internet for that. Like three, and you had to know them or you'd never find them. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or they were behind a paywall where you were like, um, boss, sorry, boss, I don't need this. And maybe they bought it for you. Um, and that with Blender, it's so easy to get into. Like you, you type it in Google and you find a tutorial and you find will find a good one in different languages. Hmm. And that's really, really cool. I wish that would have been available for other programs as well. So there's a good Blender community now, hopefully. Also, yeah. Hmm. Awesome. All right. So it's changing that question up a little bit. What's one feature from another 3D program <laughs> that you would like to bring into Blender? And this is from any 3D program whatsoever. And Marion, you can start this. <laughs> we can go back yeah, around yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know one. Um, there's a schematic view in 3 Max that you can mm -hmm. bring up and yes. it shows you all your bones yep. connected to where they go, like in a node system kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. I wish I wish for that so much because I would because in the in the um, few in Blender uh, it's it's re it's really not that easy and you have to scroll and see which bone is connected or what to just 
a visualization of this would be so nice. <laughs> that would be the thing. Sounds good. Brad, what about you? Yeah, I think that's the number one request is like, how do I see things? And I, I mentioned that in the talk a little bit, but you know, if you if you don't have a good way to view how everything is laid out and connected in the scene, like a, a node editor that, you know, the Maya node editor is pretty good if it doesn't rearrange everything on you, but you know, every other software, Max, Motion Builder, Maya has a, a schematic view and a way to 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 break apart and look into the scene and, and Blender really doesn't allow, um, unless you start in a node tree, you can't really just look at the scene as a, as a graph and go, oh yeah, here's all of the stuff I need to look at. So yeah, I'd, I'd say that that would be my request as well. What about you, Christian? Same thing? Um, kind of, I guess so I like, um, <laughs> like a node editor for rigging would be, would be nice. Cause yeah. that's something that's, okay. there's a node editor for shaders at the moment in Blender right. and a few other things. And actually like recently they've been adding, uh, this thing that called geometry nodes, which is kind of part of the, the everything nodes project. <laughs> and, and eventually that's going to include rigging, uh, stuff as well, but not yet. Um, probably maybe version 3.0 or 3.1 or something. Um, uh, so that would be one thing, but maybe uh, the 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 main thing I would want right now is a better hockey editor, because it's yeah. it, it's 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 um it could be better. Uh, basically, like it doesn't it doesn't warn you about conflicts, and uh. also uh, every every single tool that you might want to change the hotkey for, you have to change it for well for every mode, like I uh, mentioned yeah. in the in the talk, but. But this means that basically there's like 20 different move tools uh, and, and like select all, like I showed, it's it's like 50 different entries and you have to change each one of them if you want uh, the hotkeys to be consistent. Um, so that that would be nice. Okay, we have a question from chat, which I don't know because I don't use Blender. <laughs> can you put audio into Blender? Yes. Yes, yes you yeah. can. Awesome. Yes, you can. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> is that a brief? Is that a quick rundown, or is that a is that a more complicated question? You want to take it, Marion? <laughs> I I don't recall it from my head where to edit actually. Oh, I think so, maybe not... maybe Jenny answered it in the question. Video sequencer, mm -hmm. grab sound. Yeah, that's you it. Think. Yeah, it might be that actually. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So just drag and drop stuff into the like, yeah, just like say, like most three D programs, I feel like that's that's Blender, you Blender handles you. like you know taking yeah. and just dropping stuff into it really well. Like yeah. I, that's like I said, my son just was down like grabbing whatever, and I was like, "How did you get?" He's like, "I don't know. I just dropped it in there, and he just expected <laughs> it to work, and it did." And I was like, "That wouldn't have worked in yeah. Max or Max. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Also, it has a video editor built in, yeah. which is you know. Nice. Yeah, for for uh, work when when animators uh, film themselves as a reference, you have that in a uh, good format. You can just drop it in a viewport, and it's there, and it will play, and it's done. Mm. That's really good. Yeah, yeah that really works. handy for reference images as well. Just like plain images, you just throw them in the viewport. Yeah. All right. And what do you think is the future of Blender in terms of our industry, game and industry? Do you think it'll see more use, mm -hmm. become more of a you know, um, industry standard integration with game engines. Like, what, what do you think will be required for that to happen? I know that's kind of like a, a broad, a huge answer, but like, where I guess, where would you like to see it go, or where do you think it will go? Let's go uh, backwards again. <laughs> so, Christian. Uh, well, I think in the short term, probably it's going to be adopted by a lot more uh, indies and freelancers mm -hmm. mainly. But, um, but there's already been some like bigger studios that have been switching to Blender, like um, Ubisoft, uh, I think like a cinematic, no, like a TV uh, department uh, switched to Blender. And I think there was like another studio in Japan, I forget the, the name um, that switched. So like it's, it's sort of shifting over that way, but I think probably the inertia of like, you know, existing pipelines is gonna be so big that for, for most studios, it's probably gonna be prohibitively Difficult mm -hmm. to to switch, or to you know, even if they wanted to 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 switch quickly. Oh, Dan says um, embark in Sweden uses it. Hmm. Hmm. But yeah, I think long term though, they could definitely be more of a, a mainstream tool for for even you know the biggest studios. I think, but definitely is going to need 
a few more <laughs> tweaks and features and and some little more refinements still in the in the in the interface because it's it's so much better than it used to be but there's yeah. still room for improvement is there integration with uh with game engines like unreal or not i like again i have yeah. Blender, but there is awesome yeah there's, yeah, there's it's, some it's the fbx path is still a little rough but they've improved it both from the epic like epic has blender tools that are supported and um you know to make that process easier and that's it's you know you get access to their github but then you know there's the game engine stuff is basically just still relying on Blender's FBX pipeline, and that gotcha. that is still rough. Um, <laughs> you know, it, 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 because like it's it, it's not supported directly. Yeah, yeah, and and even not, we're all know, for honesty best, here, guys. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. It you know, and that, that's why I wanted to point out, like in 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 my talk, like when you open up an FBX file, that like it's going to look crazy. But you know, if if you're if you're starting from scratch and you're you're working exclusively in blender it's it's less headache but there's still some some technical issues you have to get through yeah um, but anyway like for me it's a it, for game engine stuff you know i as long as i can get a, a file in and out um with animation intact and it it still loads where i need it to then it's fine like it doesn't matter what i'm using and i guess mary you already use it <laughs> I have for Blender the development um, in Germany, who uses it, it got a lot higher in the last two, three years. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know that when I uh, applied for my first jobs in 2010, there was like everybody on 3ds Max or uh, some studios on Maya, but Blender was super alien. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then a few studio sponsors started to oh that's free shouldn't we not buy it you know should we, <laughs> should we not it? buy it is an amazing is an amazing <laughs> sentence <laughs> you, you know what i mean because in, in germany there's a lot of tiny studios or indie studios uh, think around the world and they cannot always afford an autodesk license mm -hmm. simple as it is and so when an indie studio starts up they're like okay what what is possible with our budget mm -hmm. and I've seen that on many studios that when their indie studios become bigger, they're from 10 years ago, of course, they're now staying with Blender. And, um, and some um, studios in Germany also changed for the tools because mm. Blender now has overrun on some extended the other programs. And it um, seems to, yeah, has more resources to edit tools as well. So it seems to get more, more and more handy. I still think there should be a lot of improvement, but the amazing thing is Blender does improve a lot, and that's that's really cool. So from my perspective, or from the perspective I had in the past, I think it will become more and more. Awesome, excellent. Okay, yeah, so I, I mentioned. I'll say one one last no, thing. Yeah, I mentioned, on, uh, you know, on Twitter, it has to be usable first to get people onto it, right? So you know, you have to you have to have compelling reason to like step away from my, and price can't be it because like I said, I've had more work now in the last year with people fleeing Autodesk because of licensing issues or, you know, support issues or whatever. But, you know, if, if you just directly ask, well, Maya or Blender or whatever, it's going to be Maya if price isn't an option and you have people trained on it. But Blender right now in 2.92 to me is as a beta. Right, I I can use it. It's usable. You can you can make it work, but it's not something you can just jump onto and like get get going mm -hmm. at the same level as I would expect a motion builder team or a Maya team. But that's that's been in the last six months that it's gone from nothing to having almost you know it's to being a functional tool you can use at at right. least the same level as Maya. Right, and that's it, meanwhile you know there's been no animation updates in certain other packages for years and the the functionality is improving and there's there's some incremental changes but you know it, it's not going to replace any of those software at any time soon as 100% but it's it's about to be 100% usable to just drop into and use it whenever you need to and not require everybody to be on an autodesk product mm -hmm. so uh, we have a question from chat do you have any advice for big studios that might consider a move to Blender, but they have years of in-house tools built for Autodesk DCCs? 
Yeah, that might like be a hard one. Mm. <laughs> just do it. Yeah. <laughs> just, just just explore the tools, right? Like the um, again, the the functionality that I would need for from animation rigging is there, and it's either better or just slightly slightly behind in certain ways, but. You know, you ha you may have a huge pile of tools that you developed in Maya that Blender doesn't need because it doesn't have those problems. Mm -hmm. Like half of right. my scripts are just to work around basic issues that Maya's never fixed in twenty years. Yeah, right? absolutely. Like, you know, and that and that's that's the honest truth is half of the problems Maya has that you solve through tooling is is because it's Maya and it's flexible and it it creates some some. You know, it, it allows you to build those workarounds and rely on them for years. Where Blender, you know, you just move the bones around like Chris did for his mesh and nothing breaks. Or you just subdivide your mesh and, sub, you know, it's it's very less fragile as a tool than Maya is. And so you you can just go in and bash things around and and come out the other end unscathed where Maya would immediately punish you. So Yeah, that's a very compelling <laughs> compelling case as someone whose Maya yeah. crashed multiple times this week. <laughs> right, yeah. I, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm anti-software punishing the user. <laughs> I'm just going to clip yeah. this and then just put it in front of, <laughs> of my leads yeah. and be like, hey, so how far are we into this game? How many rigs do we have to rebuild? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's uh, almost like I could, uh, can only agree to, to Brad. And if you don't have, to, if you have a problem with Blender, there might be already been a tool mm. because the main Blender market yeah. is awesome and it's big and it's people putting out their tools there and it is bigger than it has ever been for, for 3 ds Max as far as I have seen. So, and um, yeah, there's a lot of things that are just already done by someone else that you can buy for five euros. Or yeah. Yeah. Right. Plus, Blender uses Python as well, so probably a lot of knowledge carries over. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's awesome. All right, well, we are almost out of time. Can you guys all do a shout out as to where people can find you? I can't remember where, where we stepped off, so let's go. Brad, you're, you're always in the middle. <laughs> let's go. Brad, Mary, and Christian. <laughs> How's that sound? All right, yeah. Uh, Rigging Dojo on Twitter and everywhere else, and then, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll see whatever gets bat signaled up there, so. Awesome. Yeah, you can find me um, under the tag EOS Fox because my normal name is just so random, you will not find me with that one. <laughs> and that's true. And yeah. um, on YouTube, for, for all the Blender and Grease Pencil stuff, you can find me under EOS Flow because of animation flow. And yeah, and also on Twitch, it also is EOS Fox. Ex yeah, everywhere is EOS Fox, basically. Awesome. Christian? And I'm at Ninja Dodo on Twitter. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, they can all, as you can all look at their their talks on YouTube. Uh, and we'll be out and we'll be back with uh, We Don't Need No Interpolation, which Brad is also part of. So yeah, hang I gotta, on I gotta a second. Yeah. <laughs> thank you.